Yeah, when Madam comes in after the introduction, we can, uh, you know, introduce okay, her. Okay. Yes. A very hearty good afternoon, respected principal, Dr. Pooja Ram Chandani, our vice principal, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, professors, and my fellow mates. On behalf of HR College of Commerce and Economics, I, Ashram Anglik, would like to extend my warm welcome to our chief guest, Mr. Sandeep Batra, President, Corporate Center, ICIC Bank. The pandemic, COVID-19, has brought with it a host of challenges. We, at National Service Scheme, NSS, take this as an opportunity to bring about a change and innovate. The Financial Literacy Webinar on Investment Strategies Post-COVID is an initiative to equip ourselves with the best of knowledge from the industry expert and adopt best practices. Let us make the best of this opportunity and awaken our minds to this treasure of knowledge. I now invite our Vice Principal, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, to take this webinar forward. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, respected Principal Madam Dr. Pooja, who will be joining us in a while. Uh, our guest, definitely, Mr. Sandeep Batraji, and all our dear students who are eagerly waiting to hear the guest. A warm welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, HR College has always been at the forefront when it comes to industry engagement, and that is also reflected uh, in our landmark placements that uh, HR College has been uh, has been forcing all, all, all throughout. So I think more than the placement is also the kind of relationship that uh, HR college has always been maintaining with, uh, uh, with corporates. And we are delighted that uh, Mr. Sandeep Batra has taken out time from his busy schedule uh, to address the gathering. So uh, before we begin with the second uh, seminar, uh, I would take this opportunity to formally introduce uh, Mr. Batra. So Mr. Batra is a chartered accountant and a company secretary. It's a very interesting combination. And uh, Mr. Batra has been working with the ICICI group for the last 19 years. He's currently the president corporate center at ICICI Bank. As president corporate center, Mr. Batra oversees the risk, internal audit, financial crimes, prevention, compliance, secretarial technologies, uh, corporate communications, and operation functions at the bank. As part of the executive committee, Mr. Batra also oversees legal, human resource, and infrastructure management group for the bank. He's also on the board of several ICICI group companies like ICICI Prudential Life, Lombard, the general insurance arm, asset management company, which is the mutual fund arm, uh, the ICICI Bank UK, the venture fund management company, and the list is on. In his previous stint, he has worked uh, uh, as the compliance officer for the group. Mr. Batra has been the founder member of the ICICI Prudential Life Insurance team and has worked as a yeah, yeah, so we huh? very warmly welcome huh? him to this uh, webinar and uh, a very interesting topic because financial literacy and investment is a life skill. So uh, my father was also a teacher and he told me, whichever profession you choose, learn one art, that is the art of managing your own money, because irrespective of the profession, this is a life skill which will never go wasted. So pick, it, pick this up early in your life. And I think uh, I'm a little unfortunate that I'm meeting Mr. Batra a little late and you guys are a little more fortunate that you're meeting him maybe uh, at the right time when you should start investing, which Batraji will throw more light on. So we warmly welcome you, uh, Mr. Batra, and over to you for uh, addressing the audience, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. As I was just mentioning before the call, I mean, uh, I, uh, I've been having this kind of a discussions in a pre-pandemic era would have been a little more difficult because uh, Saturday afternoon, most of you would have loved to go out for seeing a movie or going for a ticket rather than listening, listening to somebody else. But the good thing about this is you know, from your perspective, I can see a lot of, I, mean, I can see, I know, I, I can't see, but uh, I mean, you can be in the comfort of your homes. You can be wearing shorts and have a good time listening whenever you want to. Um, you know, in fact, the, I mean, since even I am working from home half the time, even right now, so it's your, your dress codes have certainly changed and made it a lot more comfortable than what it was in the previous year. And I think, uh, I think Ashray rightly said, you know, I mean, while pandemic is a challenge and I don't want to call it a challenge, but it is what it is. I mean, really, you can't do uh, much about it. Uh, I mean, I have, I mean, over the years, I've sort of learned to bucket things in you know, bucket any problem or any environment into two things. One which you can't control and one which you can't control. And of course, I mean, I pray to God, I've bucketed them properly. But once you have bucketed them, I think it's clearly important to just focus on what you can control and forget what you can't control. Uh, uh, 
pandemic is one such things i mean what you can i mean um, can control is of course take all the safety precautions that you guys have been taking and that is why all of you are uh, right here but beyond that i mean it is what it is i mean i mean there is no point getting into it i think what we really need to be doing is uh, as uh, corporates as students as individuals they see where the opportunities are and i think that's what uh, i think uh, uh, i think you mentioned it and i think that is perfectly the right way to go about uh, approaching in uh, approaching anything in in life so i mean i was supposed to start by saying you know people have been saying what a year 2020 i mean when will that get over as if the date change is going to make a big difference so it's not going to have a make much of a difference but i think what we really need to be remembering is as this generation i can tell you you are one of the luckiest generation in centuries okay. and i'll give you data to that thing i mean um, and especially the people who are going to college yeah, sure. people which is i guess for the people over here i mean whenever people whenever you feel demotivated saying what the hell is happening just remember two things um Ten percent of the Indian population is below the poverty line, which means that they do not get food every week, every day. They don't get. It's a large number, by the way. I mean, it will be in the region of fifteen to twenty crores, and whatever the estimates are. If you, anybody in your family has a car, any car, you are in the top ten. If you have a two-wheeler, which I guess most of you are, you are in the top twenty, thirty percent. So whichever way you look at, you are lucky. We have. access to fair bit of wealth i mean i mean i don't think so uh, and and this number was not very different when you were born so if i assume that you guys most of you were born in the late 90s or early 20s 30% of india was below the poverty line this number is significantly reduced look at the per capita income which is almost fourfold during this period so the kind of prosperity that has been seen by this generation and the kind of peace that has been seen by this generation is phenomenal Yes, we are going through challenging times, but I'm sure after six months to one year, it will become another story, and we will probably move on. You know what this pandemic has really done? Not the correlation of health. Uh, actually, if you can start with the presentation, I mean, uh, uh, or yeah. Mansi, Mansi was supposed to. Yes, sir. So you can start yes, with the first. Uh, you can just yes. start with the first or second slide. Uh, uh, so just one, just one. Mute all except the except the uh, except Sandeep Ji. Mute yeah. all. Except yes, sir. You can circulate the presentation. I mean, as you are appropriate, so there is nothing very confidential about it. Yes, But sir. I will just use this more as an excuse. You can uh, uh, move down, move down. Ah, uh, uh, just just stay here for a minute. Uh, And I will just uh, uh, just a Sandeep, moment, sir. So one second. <laughs> Yes. Yes, sir. So you can continue now. Right. I think one of the, you know, one of the most important linkages which is coming out is the correlation between health and wealth, or health and finance. And of course, some people say health as well, and it is absolutely true. And we can we can have data around it. If you see what has happened to people who have, and I maybe a little use morbid data. Of who have died because of pandemic, or who are the companies, who are the businesses which are suffering because of the pandemic, and you will find a very strong correlation. Those who have had comorbidity, if you see the deaths, uh, it's, 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 uh, I mean, the numbers are coming down, and I hope we're able to find a vaccine, etc. But whatever has happened up to now, you will find that 70 to 80 percent of the deaths and the challenges being faced are the people who anyway had some kind of illness. across i mean could have been diabetes it could have been heart attack this i mean there is i mean there is i mean there is no medical uh, firm evidence but largely whatever data is coming at this point of time 70 to 80 and which is which is a very very strong correlation now you move to court, to the businesses there is an equivalent challenge and we do this analysis even with our banks the maximum stress is coming across businesses is who had If I use the word comorbidity and in business comorbidity, I mean two things. One is who has uh, 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 remain with the previous slide. 
um, uh, who has a um, very high debt and who has not built enough cash balance to take care of contingency. Other than that, virtually every business is coming back in a way as lockdown is over. Yeah, yeah. So I think there is a very, very strong correlation. Um, and I think health is very, very, very important. And I think the sooner, I mean, all of you who are in your late teens or early 20s, I guess that would be your age and point of time. Um, you are, I mean, all of you have been gifted with such a beautiful body, notwithstanding how you use it. It will last you beautifully for another 10, 15 years. But after that, it will require some kind of maintenance. So what you really need to be doing is, I mean, of course, um, there is diet. I mean, we all know about it. And I'm sure all your colleges and you people are familiar. Some kind of a regular exercise, at least four or five days a week. I'm not saying seven days a week. And the most important, which somehow this generation feels is a waste of time, is sleep. Uh, anybody who doubts the importance of sleep, I would strongly recommend this book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. It puts a very close, strong correlation between your health, between the marks that you get, and maybe even sometimes to the extent of wealth, depending on the point of content of sleep. And one of the biggest reasons why uh, I mean, so called depression and anxieties have increased in this generation when I compare to others is because the average sleeping hours have reduced. The body repairs itself. So that's on the sleep, uh, that's on the health side. Now, in, in wealth, it is also very, very, very similar. I mean, it requires discipline, it requires starting early, it requires long term benefits so that you have a better future. Lots of people spend a fair amount of wealth looking after their own self or their family who suffer from illnesses, and that significant waste of money. And of course, uh, one is money. I mean, you have to do it. You have to do it if you want. Well, I'm not saying if you look after yourself, they guarantee that everything uh, you will always, I mean, you will never have to go to a doctor or hospital. But the probability that you have to go will probably reduce. That's, that is, and that can be a big difference. And that makes a big difference as you age. At this age, it doesn't matter. But as you age, it does, does make a big difference. We okay, move to the next slide, Mark. Now, I will just talk about, you know, there is a big change in lifespans which have happened over the last hundred odd years. The average age for a human, for Indians, more specifically, say when we got independence in 47, were close to 40s, 40. Today, it is 67. That's average. And we have a mix of population which has access to nutrition and wealth like yourself. And there is a large population which doesn't have that. If I take profiles such as ours, the average age is more in the 70s and 80s. Okay. Now come to uh, your earning periods. I mean, you normally don't earn for the first 25 years of life. I mean, that's, that's how it is. Um, you start earning at around about 25, 26. Uh, if you are lucky, you will keep earning to 60. But most of us uh, will, I mean, will have something or the other, and you will have the earning periods be shorter for whatever reasons. In that. So that's the reality. That's the reality. Okay. Um, I mean, let's assume you've worked to 60, but you still have 20 years, 20 to 30 years to look after yourself. You, India, largely was blessed with the joint family system. Uh, as we are becoming wealthier, we all know this is breaking down. I'm not passing any judgment whether this was good or this is good, but that is a fact. Which means that the people who really have to look after you is not your children, it is you. So the probability of you look, your children looking after you is low. If they do, it's great, it's a bonus. I do hope and pray, but don't be, don't make your planning based on that. I know these are little tough, I mean, these are different things to take when you have not even started earning your first check, but it is important. Now, earnings is not that difficult. I mean, I can just say, I mean, savings is not that difficult. And uh, Mansi, if you can move to the next slide. Um, I mean, what you really need to do is start early. And I think Professor mentioned about starting early. And this is what it does. Money and health, like old wine, old whiskey, it just becomes more and more beautiful in the age. This is the power of compounding. It doesn't happen in three, five years. It happens over the same. 
Okay, before you move to the next slide, I just want you, I'll just ask a question to each of you. You can write it down and the answer will be in the next slide. Uh, you know, suppose I were to ask you, you start saving 10,000 rupees a month and which earns an interest of 8%, nothing fancy, 10,000 a month, 8%. How much will this be at the end of 10, 20, and 30 years? Okay, so I'll stop for a minute and you just put some guesswork and just put it on your day uh, and just put it mentally around it. I'll give you a minute right now. Everyone, I have enabled the chat box. You can write your answers there as well. All right. Okay. Anyway, let's move on to the next slide. And I don't know how many of you would have. You can do a self-assessment right now. Mansi, if you can move to the next slide. Look at these numbers. 10 years, this is about 19 odd lakhs. 20 years, about 60 lakhs. And 30 years, 10,000 rupees a month. Not a big sum, it's a princely sum of one and a half. All right. Okay. So this is what discipline brings to you. This is what starting early brings to you. So I think that's, I think that is my only point was start early. In a few years from now, you will start earning. Uh, I know it's a good time to spend. Of course, you should be spending. I'm no one is saying that you should not be spending and having a good life, have your parties, have your, this thing is but earmark something that you will not touch till you reach 60. Okay, earmark very, very clearly. It could be 5,000, 10,000 as you start burning more. It could be whatever the number is, I'm not even getting into that, but it is important to start building the coppers early. If one thing that you can learn from this session is the power of compounding, right? Einstein once said, I know, it's this is attributed to him, but so I just quote it, even if it is not him, that the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. And it is appreciated by very, very few people. And I repeat, if there is one thing that you want to learn is just understanding the power of compound interest, what it does over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, that you have to look out there. You will reach an age of 60, oh, I mean, and you will live much longer. So you need to be prepared for that. Now, I mean, we have, we have covered this uh, and things will, uh, okay. Uh, all right, I can see some WhatsApp, I mean, message or chart boards, but that's okay. Now you can move to the next slide. I mean, of course, your way in which you're going to be spending, saving is going to be a little different. And uh, so we have already 20 minutes behind. Uh, Mansi, can I, I mean, I mean, I'll leave the presentations. There are, uh, there are the next couple of slides are essentially around how and what you need to focus on in your early ages of your careers. And then when, as you become, as you start having children and uh, when you are nearing retirement. Okay. Uh, I think one important aspect, I thought I'd just bring it in, especially in your earning phase, when you get your first dependent, which could be marriage or your first child is an importance of getting a term life insurance cover. It doesn't cost much. It is important. You do not buy a cover. I mean, and I mean, people have this bad habit of thinking it has got some, you know, uh, I mean, thinking that, oh, I'm a cover. Is it a bad sign or something will happen to me? When you buy term insurance, it's a pretty small premium for a, for a person in his under 30, it is less than 10,000 a year and you get a cover of crore, okay? More than a crore in that, in that sense. 
it gives you peace of mind not you if i mean if no one is dependent of you then those don't need a cover but a basic term cover insurance is so important uh and don't feel sad that you didn't die during the end of the year and money is wasted i just wanted to because people start thinking oops mera paisa barbaad kiya maine insurance pe uh, i had spent some kind of a money all right it's important so the people who are dependent on you so that's the only point that i'll make once you can move to the next slide and i will if you can just jump uh, to slide in the uh 15 i mean there these are various attributes uh just just jump to slide 15 uh in that sense you guys can go through it uh in terms of the as a trip you know for investing clearly you need to understand what are the options which are available and here i can tell you simplicity is the ultimate sophistication you don't require any complications you just require discipline now we just made a bit of a chart around here uh you got a bank and post deposit deposits where you know there is there are three things to look at any asset class there is risk there is the return that you will get and that you will have liquidity now bank deposits and post office deposits are the lowest risk with i mean low return but very high liquidity right this forms almost your basic form of investment your first 10% 15% kind of stuff has to be around here there is also uh, saving schemes by the government around provident fund which you can add to this bit and that gives you a fair bit of returns and if you as you go through this asset class that you find that the risk keeps on increasing and so does the return right uh, i have not added two asset classes over here and we can talk about it that is property and gold property remember the one that you are staying is not an investment it is your consumption the property that you give it on rent is essentially an investment gold is a decent investment provided you are willing to sell it the problem with gold as an investment is the sentimental value attached to it and we just never sell it so then it hardly it qualifies as an investment but i mean i'm not dismissing these uh, these categories but they are also uh, Uh, they are there, but they have their uh, limitations. Properties is not liquid. Gold is not liquid. Uh, the and the transaction cost is also high. Buying and selling is not easy, and when you want it, you really can't sell. So let's talk about largely who are which are which are these three investments. You have mutual funds, and I think mutual funds for a retail investor becomes a pretty good asset class. A debt mutual fund, which invests in government securities. or long term situation are low in risk okay there is still a risk because if there is a default by the counterparty there is but the returns are slightly better than in deposit and the liquidity is sort of moderate equity whether done directly or through mutual funds is an important class and for people like yours and young generation it is strongly recommended that you do have a certain portion of your Now you can just does it have risk? The answer is yes. There is no two opinions about it. But if you see equity as an asset class over a ten, fifteen, or periods, gives a very decent return, especially if you put it through a diversified mutual fund. I mean, if you are an expert yourself, then it's a different matter. But most of us, when we go about investing, you will have one stock that we will do brilliantly well. and we will become a hero and there will be some two stock which will become absolutely which will negate all the returns that you would have made in others so i mean i'm not saying don't do any of this it's just that out of your pool of investment start allocating money separately then you have got pms and uh, alternative asset funds they are much more higher risk low on liquidity i think you should cross those thresholds once you have built up a corpus of a couple of crores before that don't even think of these and never go and invest in a first with an institution which is not regulated i mean it's sure i mean the institution that is you are investing through is either regulated by reserve bank sebi or rda it is very very important i mean most of us uh, i mean while we make lots of money when you lose money it just i mean i i, I mean it just negates everything else because you are losing principal and you are having in uh, uh, uh and what you are getting is essentially interest this is very similar to banking you know in banking when we give a loan if if everything goes well we earn 3% but 
But if it goes bad, I lose almost half the amount. I mean, because that's the value of the security that will really be there. So it's very similar to what it is. So now, now if you can move to the next slide, Mansi. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is uh, this is in a way. Uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, slide sixteen. I don't think so. This um, after yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay, you have to define your assets, your sacred assets. I mean, that number will depend on your risk appetite. I don't want to get into it, whether it is 10, 20, 30 percent. This is the number which you should always be. You want to preserve the principle. Forget the interest. Your FD, money market instrument, post office deposits, provident fund. I mean, NSCs, whatever you want. Okay. This comes over here. Basics, small, simple, safe. It is notwithstanding whatever fancy things please remember 40 percent of india savings today 40 or 50 percent is still in simple fixed deposit and there is a reason because it is simple it is safe okay i mean just because it is i mean don't think it just belongs to your father the grandfather's generation it belongs to you as well what you need to do is build on top of it what your fathers and grandfathers which you have not done. Okay? Which is get in some equity, which could be direct. Uh, uh, I mean, you can, if you, if you want to develop the expertise over a period of time, you can do some uh, direct equity and you have equity meeting. Those invest systematically month on month over a longer period of time and build up a crop. But remember, that is the principle which can go below the amount that you invested in, it has a risk on capital. So you need to make some kind of a balance of life, health, finance is all about getting a balance. No one is saying don't take risks. No one is saying you guys don't party. No one is saying don't have a drink at all. All right. I think you should know your limits. You should know your risk appetite and gradually build upon it and have a discipline that is about the only thing that i will talk about here uh, i mean the other slides are i mean some common mistakes etc so i'll stop over here and then if i have to come back to any of these slides uh, uh, we can come back but uh, i mean I, so we, I let's keep it open for questions you can ask questions on this topic or anything else uh, if you think i can answer i will try to answer Ashtray? Yes, sir. I'll unmute everyone. Anmol, are you there? Yeah. A very good afternoon, sir. I'm Anmol Malik from SYBFM. I would like to ask you a question. Since the Indian yeah. banking industry, yeah. Since the Indian banking industry play an important role in the economic development of the country, and is the most dominant segment of the financial sector. So as we know, banks and NBFCs are underperforming and couldn't find any relief package or uh, interest in interest of banks or NBFCs. So what, according to you, should the government do to uplift this sector or, or how should the relief package be? Hey, why do we need a relief package? I mean, I think we have to come for, uh, for this. I don't think so. Most banks need a relief package in the first place. Uh, okay. Let me put it this way. <clears throat> Is that I think, again, coming to the basic question that I started off with, you need a relief package if you were not strong enough in the first place. Okay. So, uh, um, I think what the government has done, let's talk about what the government has done. I mean, this pandemic has caused lots of economic stress to a lot of people. And uh, they have done a couple of things. First, if you see, financial system is more a second order effect than the primary. Uh, than the primary. Fundamentally, what you need is the economy to come back. And how the economy comes back is when the lockdown is uh, lifted and the economic needs of economy. Once the needs of economy start moving, money starts getting flowed to the banks. All right. And you will repay your loan. If you if your business itself is not doing well, what will you do? I mean, how will you ever repay a loan that you've probably taken? You, I mean, how will you pay salaries to your workers? You have a problem. So what the government has done, and also, I mean, you'll have to understand from a government's perspective that they also have the challenges. It's not that they have got unlimited supply of money. They have got a uh, fiscal deficit to manage. Because I have mean, a fiscal deficit, if I just understand from your perspective, I mean, people say, why doesn't the government print more notes? Or why doesn't it inflation away or borrow money from the market? 
when they do it it is actually borrowing money from the second generation right i'm not saying you don't do it at all it's just that it has to fall within within limits and that's why governments are bound by this fiscal limit so clearly even before the pandemic happened the fiscal deficit in india if you see in international context has been high so the space available as a country for us has been sort of limited now within that space there have been two things which the government has done one is of course for the msme scheme which is the small and medium enterprises they have given some kind of a guarantee now if i look at the msme sector it is about uh, from a borrowing segment it is about 20 about close to about 20% of overall bank banking lending is to the msme sector and by government giving uh, a a package of a, a virtual guarantee for about uh, 3 lakh crores uh, uh, against the total outstanding in my estimate for msme would be about 15 to 20 trillion they have virtually secured that portion all right from a banking perspective which gives confidence to the bank so where are the banks going to be lending essentially essentially is going to be places who have been temporarily got affected by covid who are otherwise viable if a business was unviable prior to this that cannot covid cannot be the reason so that goes to my first example of uh, i mean um, uh, the first example of oh morbidity in that sense so businesses which were unviable in the past is not going to get helped by covid the covid situation will in fact make them worse then the next point that you really talked about what has reserve bank of india done for banks i think in a way it's for indirectly for borrowers they have allowed uh what is called been i mean talked in the press as moratorium where if you find a borrower to be viable you he need not pay us interest in principle for a period of 3 months which got further extended by another 3 months which is ending in the month of august now i think that is a fair thing to be done and two days back reserve bank of india has permitted uh, subject to certain norms certain kind of restructuring for corporate rates which are which is essentially trying to give them more time to repay the loans but it is important that the business per se has to be viable if the business per se is viable then pandemic or no pandemic can help you so i think those are the packages which have been put into place i think as individuals and as while there is a role of the government i am not taking it all right we can ask and the businesses we can ask lots of things from the government but most of the time i can assure you the challenges and the strength is always within you it is rare that you will find a competition or a government will defeat you most of the time each of us get defeated by ourselves thank you sir so having that mental framework thank and thinking through what this i let me just this one more point having at this point of time i mean pandemic you can't control but ensuring that you are calm ensuring that you are able to add on to skills i'm sure each of you are i mean your digital skills would have been a multiple of what it was earlier look at you i am seeing i mean people about 60 and 70 also going digital now i mean talk to your parents and grandparents would you be comfortable doing a whatsapp call video call with them as early as 6 3 4 months back we have got banking customers who used to come to a branch uh and who refused to work on on, on the tablet or uh, or uh, we have an i mobile lunch right? so if you have an account with us i mean for that i mean you can do virtually every banking transaction you can think of on the mobile right as an individual and even corporate customers we have enabled them right now but still people choose to come to a branch because they have i think that habit is sort of working and the digital is coming up and that is happening for a lot of people who did not believe in digital earlier it's a new skill which is getting developed so it is very good Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ashwin, next question. Thank you. Uh, Devik wants to ask. Hi, sir. This is Devik from Bihar. Hi, Devik. So, so with the fear of another economic meltdown, would it be wise to invest in gold and other metals than the equities market? If not, what other areas would you suggest the investors to put their money in for a better and safer return? Look, better and safer are contradictory. 
let me start with that <laughs> a safer yes. will always have lower risk so if somebody is giving you a fancy risk please question whether it is safe at all or not all right so i mean if you see i have approached for normal retail investors i'm not talking of very super bright people most of us uh, keep decide your answer all right a simple one for youngsters like to be 50% in fixed income which could be bank deposits uh mutual fund debt mutual fund all mutual funds are not the same by the way and the balance for youngsters like you could be equity all right and equity mutual fund you can put 4 or 5% in gold now gold as i mentioned is a great edge when does gold go up when people lose confidence in the in the actual currency that is a hedge against inflation that is a hedge against the world you should have some portion of your gold but if you are buying gold in the form of a jewelry it is not an investment i know there are girls and women out here but the, but the gold which you can sell tomorrow in fact now you got government of india giving gold in sovereign bond which mirror the price of the gold is a great investment but but gold will live once the economy stabilizes gold will stop giving you returns it has given you return in the last one or two years because you are having a fiscal challenge because you are having an economic challenge gold rarely gives you returns in good times when the economy does well it's a, so it's a great hedge so you should have it i don't think so your asset allocation strategy should change just because there is a pandemic right okay okay let's let's find back you got sensex where is it right now devik uh and this is let me check just a second huh? just a second sir ha ah. so nifty is at around uh, 11200 uh, 38000 i guess 38000 okay 38000 whatever the number is doesn't matter 79 and 6 was 0 100 sorry was 100 after that you have had booms you have had depressions you have had wars you had everything So over a longer period of time, it does give you return. Okay, you will go through these cycles. Now there is no perfect timing. For any of us, predict what the sensex will be five, ten, fifteen years out, or oh, sorry, two, three months down the line is an impossible. If anybody can predict the value of any commodity or any equity market. or even bond market every every single day for the next 10 years he can become a billionaire we don't have to be having this discussion it's impossible no one can do that no one is at capability so what you do is you have a diversified portfolio you, know, you make certain allocations in fixed income you put certain allocations in equity if you are a youngster and you don't need money i mean if you don't have any specific needs whether it could be your post graduation you may want some of your savings for that or for some people who are already graduates I mean, you know when your time will come. Suppose, and the typical times where uh, a parent needs to invest. What are your big, big, big investments? Buying the house, children's education, or a children's marriage. Those are the three big, normally, investments which all of I mean most, uh, I, most of us, us make. And then you keep certain aside for any health issues that you might have. Um, so what you do is you just. Allocate your investment, and then then let it be there. Have a look at it. I'm not saying completely bad. You should have a look at the fund manager. Look at what's happening in the environment. Look at whether the mutual fund is well diversified or is it taking too much of it. So do all of it, but keep it simple, and don't touch the aggregate pool. Of course, if it has to be meeting an objective, it's absolutely to be done. Thank you so Thanks. much, sir. Ashre, next question. Gorav, uh, hi sir, this is Gorav from SYBFM. So my question is that uh, after how the markets have shown a, a V-shaped recovery, uh, see after the pandemic, do you still think that the uh, markets are reflecting a state of the economy right now? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> and I don't think so. Any of us knows that. Okay. one thing good about a market is that it normally reflects the aggregate view of what is about to come so if you see during the course of the year 
if you if i just divide this this year into two parts the first half saw a drop of about 25 30% and then you saw i mean uh, and the last three months has been significant now there are multiple reasons why this has gone up primarily being the extent of liquidity being pumped in the us and what happens in the us given the fact that us is 24 uh, 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 20 to 24% of the world gdp money comes into markets such as ours right so people are flush with liquidity people also by the way have got excess liquidity even within india because you are not able to spend and you have all the time do you know the number of brokerage accounts which have got opened in this last three months has been a record 50 lakhs all right no it's a number it's a number now you can say okay boss i can't go for a movie let me do something i'll play the market it's good i'm saying nothing right or wrong but this is a fact there is liquidity they are chasing good stocks now even if you look at the sensex the number of people who the number of stocks which have moved that index are a handful to take out the five stocks for the last two years you take it for six months take it for two years to get for three three four years just take out the top five stock and see the index return it will it depict a very very different situation so it's for you as an individual to pick up that one stock because the top is always going to be difficult that is why i come back i mean you need to invest in that different fund the other exercise you may want to keep as interesting is you have the sensex you have the composition of the sensex look at the list of companies which are there today look at 10 years back 20 years back and look at 30 years back and that's an exercise i would encourage you guys to do see the shape of industries that are there infosys and tcs won't even existing 30 years back or practically in that and there will be some companies out there which don't even exist today right things change and when they are changing when you are as part of it it is very difficult to predict i mean you can if you are able to pick it brilliant then you make super money no i'm not taking that away you make super money what i am saying is you just need to be focused on yourself your overall strategy focus on asset allocation which means what percentage of your assets you want to put between uh, equity debt you can add property and gold you can decide whatever is percentage depending on your own risk appetite and leave it if something is going wrong then don't hesitate to cut loss that's also important um, but that's that's where it is thank you so much sir ashwin next one aryan uh, yes yeah go ahead uh, hello sir this is aryan from sy bms on the outset i would like to thank you for taking out time and uh, addressing us my question to you is uh that the outlook of the banking sector seems negative you know the npas are expected to increase uh, a lot of uh, borrowers have been uh, given moratorium however yep. uh, if you look at the charts hdfc has somehow managed to rally up to the pre uh, covid levels whereas if you look at the other banks you look at sbi you look at kotak uh, uh, they haven't rallied as much so do you think the rally of hdfc is justified or are we awaiting uh, uh, some correction uh gorov i really don't want to comment on individual stocks i think as a i mean listen, since i am working in a bank i mean what we focus on as an uh as an entity is how to ensure that your bank is strong all right now if you see any bank the strength of a banking institution essentially comes from the strength of its deposit franchise in fact banks are the only institutions uh where your liabilities are your biggest asset so if you are managing to get a low cost liabilities is then when you can lend to prime customer and then and make money along the way all right okay bank so to that extent i think uh if you see indian banking per se roughly 60 65% is public sector 
30-35 percent is private sector, and then there is a small portion of the bank. Um, what happens to bank right now is going to be largely a function of three things. One is the strength of the liability franchise. Second is the digital and technology capabilities. If you see banks are becoming more and more fintechs, and technology is becoming a very, very important part of this. And third is your capital deployment. How much capital adequacy that you, because that is sort of your shock absorber. That is your resilience that you're building into your business. Uh, so to that extent, I think, um, I mean, HDFC, Kotak, ICSI, and all of us are placed in a pretty good sense. In terms of this. Stock markets are, a, are not essentially a reflection of the underlying strength, but yes, does, has HDFC given a very good return over the last 20, 25 years? Of course, it has done a fantastic job. And the primary reason, okay, let me give you the other way around. Why they have given it is because they have not taken very high lumpy loans. They have not wicket ni The challenge comes when the NPS become high, which is equivalent of your falling sick. If you are not in the pavilion, then you can't make runs. So I don't know if you have if you've been following Drava. Do you used to say, I mean, you don't make runs when you are in the when you when you get out. You only make runs when you are on the on the crease. There are times when you have to just bend your wicket, and times when you have to hit the pieces. Right now, for banks, it is very important to defend your wicket because the environment is uncertain. Thank you so much, sir. Ashray? Thank you, sir. Uh, Karina, are you there? Uh, yes, Ashray. Yes, go ahead. Um, good afternoon, sir. I'm Karina yes. from FYBMS. Um, I'd like to Hi. say it's an absolute honor having you with us today. Um, my question is that the pandemic has obviously given a massive jolt to the international economy. But in India, we see rural demand is picking up and we have a few green shoots of recovery visible. Now we are all hoping for a V-shaped recovery, but the prospects of a stagnant U or even the dreaded L seem more realistic. So sir, according to you, what shape will the recovery take and how do you see demand picking up? So, I mean, because this is a, I mean, economists have been giving Various alphabets, U, V, L, I've lost track of the number of alphabets. I don't know. To be very frank with you. Now, I think what you need to be focused on, all right, let me say as a bank what we are focused on. And that may be a better answer because we have been telling all our investors the same thing that I'm going to be sharing with you right now. How that economy is going to shape up is anybody's guess. But whichever way is shaping up, we should be there. And during this period, what is really important is, I mean, let's see the environment. You are scared to go outside, right? We get everything delivered at home, Swiggy, Zomato, all the stuff that you really want, Amazon and Flipkart and everything. So you want a digital capability. The economy is moving. It's not that it's not moving. There are certain sectors which are doing well, and you talked about rural, which is doing fantastically well. I mean, you see the rural demand for two-wheelers, tractors, fertilizers, doing exceedingly well. Okay, so that's, that's absolutely right. Uh, now, some people are saying it's a pent-up demand, not demand. I don't know. The good thing about a rural demand is it has a larger society benefit because while rural contributes only about 17 to 18 percent of GDP, 50 percent of the population resides. So if rural does well from a society angle, it is excellent. I hope it continues to do well. We seem to be having good rains. The crop has been good, so everything is fine. Now, for our or any business, is you have to try to see, is your business. So I can tell you what we have done with this pandemic, all right, as a bank. Um, what we have enabled is what we have called, something called an ICICI stack, and I would encourage you to go to our website and uh, search on it. It is an aggregation of 500 functionalities, 500, where you can meet any and every of your banking needs, whether as an individual, you can open an account also uh, uh, on a digital platform without ever having to visit us. Uh, for a corporates, you can do trade transactions, you can do foreign exchange transactions, etc. Now, 
once you have enabled that and you are right up there on technology what you will find is there are customers who whose other whose existing banks couldn't meet that so they are coming to us now how the economy is shaping i have got no idea is it a challenge i mean forget i mean people are forecasting next year i mean you talk to economists whether the number is minus 5% 7% 2% i got no idea you have to be prepared whatever happens in terms of your skills for your customers um uh, in terms of your health and keep your ammunition dry keep some money dry so when things come back and they will they have to come back no crisis lasts for a long time vaccine would come in 6 months time and things would be i mean or whatever it comes i really don't know but we are hoping earlier than later but whenever it comes or there is herd immunity develop or whatever happens you should be should be the first person to go don't be too adventurous right now that's right thank, thank you, you so sir. much thank you sir ashray yes sir uh, khushi doshi hi there uh yeah hello sir uh, thanks a lot for coming uh my name is khushi and i'm from sybms uh my question to you is that a lot of financial instruments or tools are used to um calculate as to what is the right company to invest in so yeah. um like you know comparative common size trend um according to you post covid some of these tools might not be used so what do you think like what's the right tool like or maybe a number of other tools that can be you to determine uh, which company to analyze and you know um, pick out and invest in no uh, these things should be i don't think so covid is going to change many things but right now what covid is doing i mean like what has been your biggest i mean there are many many stuff but one of the biggest things that you look at from investing is a pe ratio right that clearly in terms of yeah second you look at earnings growth which you see out in Uh, on a future basis so okay, these are broadly two things and uh, the third which i think is equally important is leverage very high leverage means that you're going to be now with the covid when a disruption is happening okay, and there have been many times disruption is happening is there are certain set of industries which go i mean belly up and there are certain new sets of industries which come up yeah okay uh difficult to point out which one is the industry and there are certain within an industry there are certain companies which do exceedingly well yes okay i think it is all the macro trends are for it while the churn is happening it is exceedingly difficult for you to track it after yes. it has happened the price is anywhere around Yeah, so it's, right. it, it is. So it is. It is. So you need to be a real genius to do it. You can do it, William. So basically, that post COVID, I mean, you track. I mean, which are the industries that are going to be doing well? All right. And some changes happen very, very fast. The biggest change right now is digital. Yeah. E I mean, okay. Yeah. Stuff like that, which is happening, which is which is which is the same. Things. I mean, people. you will have multiple trends which have been happening over every cycle which you will find it difficult okay let's just go back i mean we are all so familiar with google and facebook yes yeah. 15 years back how many of us would have been willing to bet and put our money on a google share very or a facebook few. share very few yeah. very 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 few right you need to know what this search engine will do now i mean you can't live without google yet. i mean that's yeah what it is going to be subsequently very difficult but it has to keep on evolving and changing so i mean again to my point is trying to pick those mega trends is an exercise where it's not easy to do what again i come to the point focus on what you can control 
which is upskilling yourself. On digital ability, what digital? What are the digital skills that you are learning, Kushil, so that you can be part of the next round? Yes. That yes. is that is what are the skills? Few things common. It goes across these things. One, increasingly having an emotional balance. I mean, this pandemic has challenging everybody's emotional balance. Yes, For people, are the students, homemakers, people who are working. And even and a lot more for people who have lost their jobs. Having an emotional balance is clearly important. Okay? Keep on trying to find out ways on how you can be relevant. That is what you can focus on. And that is all all of us have to be focused on. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. For Thanks that. a lot, sir. Uh, Ashray, next question. Yes. Uh, Krish, are you there? Yeah, go ahead with the question. Sir, this is Chris from SYBFM. Uh, my question is uh, due to high volatility in markets, we are we are witnessing people shift their money from uh, equities to gold as safe, uh, safe haven. Silver has surged almost 150% and there is a lot more to get. Like it has to cross $50 to go past its all time high. Gold has crossed $2,000 per troy ounce for the first time. So, what's your take on? Bullion investment during current period and as well as post COVID. Listen, again, I come to the same point. If I knew, okay, let me give you another story. All right. Um, you started, and this was a study done by, I think, one of the US universities professors. Started in the 80s. All right. He gave that one person one dollar. One. Okay. And the person had a choice on a daily basis to either invest in the Dow Jones or in the U.S. This, I, I mean, U.S. Treasury, and he could shift it and assuming zero cost of transaction. Okay, just a very simple this thing. Every day, whichever get the highest return, higher returns, he, he that's what it. I mean, he, can you guess what would have been the value of the years time? One dollar starting. Audience is almost twenty-eight thousand right now. Twenty-eight thousand dollars. No, no, but I'm talking of daily movements. Okay. If I remember correctly, the amount was somewhere in the region of ten billion dollars. If I could predict anything on the markets tomorrow, I will retire and go home. If you can predict. For the next six months, the price of anything on a daily basis, it's good enough to take care of you for the next 50 years. Boss, remember, you can't. Most of us can't. So I don't want to make an attempt on where gold will be tomorrow, whether it is, I mean, <laughs> where it is today, where it is six months back on what it is. We all become wiser after the event is there. So I keep myself very clearly. This is my asset class. This much I invest in equity. This I invest in fixed income. Some little bit in gold. A little bit more. I don't have a view on gold. I don't have a view on any commodity. I have a view on I needing to be disciplined on my finances. I need to save something and this is where I will So basic thing is to keep your position as spread as possible. Yes, diversification is important. No. You don't know. Because in life, it's very important to know what you don't know. And there are, the, what, the more you know, you will realize, the less you know. Look at, do one thing, no. Look at, look at all video clippings of CNBC people or experts who come there or look at any research reports which came 10 years back or 5 years back or 2 years back on stocks, on gold, on oil, on everything and see how many of them got them right. It is difficult because there are millions of guys playing and if there is a transaction, please remember. Two people are having completely opposite views. 
a buyer and a seller are having completely opposite views that's why a transaction happens otherwise there is no transaction a buyer is saying the value is yet to come the seller is saying it is overvalued ma well, ma'am join please yeah please join 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 finish okay 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 so i mean it's a, i mean i'm just being little counterintuitive with that sense but things on these things have to be kept as simple keep it as simple as possible you don't know thank thank you so much sir for the question i think krish uh, sir has answered your question thank you so much sir so there are many other questions many students are there many participants but that i think this will go on continuing because they all want to know their answers uh, to get the query solved uh, because having a person like you is you know they are all anxious to all the excited to think ask questions to you but again we have time limitations and as stated so i'll take one of one question more with your permission and then we'll go to the sure sir Ash, Ashray. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Manav, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I'm Manav from uh, Third Year Banking and Insurance. So my question is, how much impact of COVID-19 do you expect will be directly proportional to the banking sector's NPA in the near future? No, the impact is NPA itself. So do I mean clearly the NPAs are going to be elevated in FY21. Ah, uh, it's difficult to uh, assess. I mean, it will vary bank by bank. Uh, it will vary. Uh, I mean, of course, the, the how banks have managed their own risk. So, if you have a book which has been to better rated borrowers, the chances of NPAs are lower, and better rated borrowers have indications are largely have less debt and have more cash, so they are more healthy. So, if you see better rated, I mean, the chances of they having comorbidity is high. Sorry, comorbidity is very <laughs> comorbidity is very low, so they will survive. So it's very similar to what I started off with. I will look after your health, guys. It it comes over here as well. So keep it. Uh, I mean, if you are profiled, if your borrowers are are strong, they will come out of it. No, the economic activity in a way is in is anyway coming to back to seventy five eighty percent of its pre COVID levels. Whatever you want to talk, I mean, on an on an on an aggregate, look at. Uh, I mean, toll collection across the country. You look at, uh, I mean, two wheelers. You look at what kind of thing. You do an aggregation. Roughly, seventy-five, eighty percent is back. And as the economy comes back, it will come back. See, of course, there will be ten percent of the economy which is not going to come back. That's also very clear. And but over a period of time, there will be a new set of economy that will come and will take its place. We don't know those. Uh, what are the which uh, uh, this thing is? So, but to be to to answer your question, the better-rated borrowers will survive. Will survive. If you have lent to a good quality, so in a bank, your risk management becomes so important. Lending to people who have good borrowers, a good intention, and a good character is so important because he has the intention of paying you back. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for the answer. So, uh, uh, and uh, I'm really happy, sir, that all students are are interacting here and uh, they're asking doubts and queries regarding. various parts of investments markets and what not uh, thank you so much sir i am really really we have uh, enlightened by your session today and uh, uh, we look forward to have more sessions from your side to you frequently coming to us our college and uh, enlightening the students uh, may uh, now call upon our principal dr pooja ramchandani ma'am to uh, please give word of thanks to our, our guest speaker today sandeep batra ji thank you ma'am thank you rahul uh, thank you. first of all uh, uh, sincere apology to sandeep ji uh, i couldn't join in the beginning and uh, the program was delayed so my sincere apologies and uh, a warm warm uh, thank you to sandeep ji for interacting with our students uh, um, it is hr college uh, completes its 60 years in we started in 1960 and our tradition and vision and mission is very clear that we uh, make our students interact with industry experts and uh, get them yes we say syllabus is outdated syllabus is not up to the mark and this is our initiative in hr college where we call on industry experts to interact with our students regularly and i uh, sincerely want to thank sandeep ji for giving his precious time i know all are in lockdown and bank has pressures 
sir has been struggling with different hectic schedules from working from home and i would like to sincerely put my thanks from on behalf of hr college and uh, all the students and the the, the courses that uh, you have interacted with and the students sir i i see this what is we are facing from march onwards in this country is is a situation that was never expected never assumed never predicted students faculty uh, even industry has been going through a severe difficult time of pandemic and you coming over from a respected bank and talking to our students on how we look at this pandemic situation still positively look at our investments strategies is something that we are always going to be grateful to i'm sure students have benefited a lot i was listening to the questions that students were posing in and i'm very glad that students were asking you uh, and uh, such intelligent questions that we know our students are also interested into how do we cope up with our investments what do we look into our future when uh, future doesn't seem to be looking like uh, 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 opening up soon for all of us but uh, thank you so much mr sandeep ji for taking your precious time out and interacting with hr college student and once again my sincere apologies that i could not no, come no with problem. the meeting. very no sorry problem. about thank it but no, 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 not a problem. my students are writing nice. to me so sweet of you and thank you and and i must say this is just the beginning sir banking and insurance industry is something that we are looking at as a specific course bbi which rahul yeah, sir also yeah. looks at so we look forward for your cooperation and support so if you can connect us to more guest speakers from banking industry we would be really grateful to you sir thank you so thank much you, and Pooja once again um, thank you it was a pleasure interacting with all of you uh, all of you stay healthy stay safe yes, thank sir. you bye bye ma'am 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 just so much for joining us thank ma you ma so much ma'am ma'am just uh, just a permission sir just yes. also spoke all earlier we had icac learning center at our college so yes, we just we want to restart we yes. started so ma'am uh, sir I just, you know, had a word with sir that if you can connect with uh, the 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 concerned person icsi yes i yes. in fact my my own self have gone through that learning matrix that icsi used to have our computer lab used to have that software if i remember yeah. mrs shani used to have uh, mrs shani had an mou so yeah. in fact uh, uh, sandeep ji if we can work on uh, virtual uh, placements also for our students of banking and insurance students i think it would be a great opportunity for them to work with you with under your shadow under your mentorship i think this will help our course go into much more uh, higher benchmarks so looking forward to uh, uh, your in, uh, collaborations with us on a on a on a regular basis thank you so much guide us to guide us on to how do we make our yeah. syllabus is also better sure thank you i think rahul would have also told you sir that yeah. we have gone for an hsnc university Yeah. Uh, where HR KC and Bombay Teachers Training College has been called by Maharashtra government, mm. and mm. Uh, Rusa is a is an agency by UGC, where three of us have performed so well, the KC, mm. HR, and the VTTC College. That all three, because of our NAC ratings, which have been highest in the country, have been mm. now given a university status. So now we can make our syllabuses, we can make our degrees, we can make our courses, design. Mm. Fantastic. so we are also looking at industry uh, uh, endorsement of our syllabus their expertise so we would connect with you on a longer time basis on this sir so thank you so much and all the best once again bye bye thank you, you thank you so thank much you thank, you so thank you so much thank you so much god bless you sir and thank you to professor rahul and the team of uh, uh, coordinators who are working with him and especially my dear students i think these are the efforts that my teachers take and this is where hr is the best college and you are a part of best college and thank you so much to all the students for supporting for coming in to learn and always telling us that you want to learn more and this is what inspires my teachers and faculty to get faculty to get industry experts to tell you what is not in syllabus but it is there in industry so hearty congratulations to rahul and his team of students who are working behind the scenes i have seen they have been preparing this from last one month so hearty congratulations to each and every student who's 
organizing and each and every one who's attending this thank you thank, thank you, you ma'am ma'am before we end this it was not possible without a support let me tell this no, it is constantly only... constantly supporting and giving all the required permissions and all the required things which was necessary to conduct this event so we uh, on behalf of nss on behalf of all students here we thank you first of all that always being a backbone for all these activities thank you for the for being there all the time thank you so much ma'am Yes, Your very good. Your permission is like the event now, ma'am. Yes, Thank yes, you so much, sir. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we hope you, uh, we keep more sessions like this. And I hope you come, uh, you join in more numbers next time. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Principal, ma'am. Thank you, Vice, uh, Vice Principal. Good job, Ashre. Good job, Ashre, and the team of NSS. Uh, very good. Thank you, ma'am. Ma very good. Very good, Mansi. Very good. And if hearty congratulations to entire NSS team. With Thank Professor you, Rahul, very Thank good. You. Thank you, ma'am. Very, very um, good. The question which I left out, you can mail it to us uh, and write to us. We can uh, try and get your answers from Sir Sandeep Ji and get the answers to. Sorry for that because your time constraint. We understand that you are keen enough to ask the questions, but again, the time constraints do uh, have a limitation on us. So thank you and for being patient there, and uh, you can share the questions with us. And we'll try our best to get get your answers, and try best uh, to get more market expert, more industry people to join in and help us out in learning more. Thank you so much. Thank you.